Hello, Kokomi here, and welcome back to another episode of Metroid Prime 2 Randomized. Last time, we entered Sanctuary Fortress, and we got the Dark Suit. It should be a moment of celebration, but it is almost bittersweet. Today, and we defeated Boost Guardian. Today, you're probably wondering what I'm doing over here in Agon, and if this empty room hasn't indicated it yet, we are going, we are heading back to Sanctuary. Um, but we're going to take the Agon entrance there, just to show it off. There's nothing really of interest to get, just aside from the fact that it exists. Thankfully, I have exactly one power bomb. Uh, and this time, we're not even going to, we're going to get there before we even scan it. Look at that, it's like we're even better than speedrunners. So yes, unfortunately, this is no longer a dark suitless run, much to my dismay. It makes me very sad. But, yeah. Just let you take it in all your glory. And all of its- all your- uh, yes, all of your glory, viewer. No, I meant all of the glory of the Dark Suit. Just absorb it. Under- come to understand the Dark Suit. <sighs> I actually do want to take this entrance uh, to the Dark World. Though we can keep going through the fortress without it. But I wanted to take this one specifically. And I just noticed we hit 100 missiles. That's actually really cool. So, yeah. Um, that's really all there is to say. Today we are doing more of Sanctuary. Oh, thank you for the power bomb. Appreciate it. I think this is a dark door coming up. Yes. Okay. And go ahead... And there are these things you can break. I broke, if my ammo count seems inconsistent from last episode, well one, I saved in between episodes. And then I got attacked by pirates on the way over. But also my ammo count is a little inconsistent because I broke a few things along the way. Just to get my ammo up a little, you know? Um, or you could just not give me ammo. That That's okay too, I guess. I mean, I'd really prefer it if you gave me ammo game. That would be very much appreciated. Yeah, power bombs are going to be really nice uh, to have, so I definitely want a lot of those. Um, right here, in this spot in the light world, there's also a spider track, but it won't work until you beat Spider Guardian. So, be careful. That's why I also recommend coming through here. Um, I didn't actually mean to do that. What you want to do is jump over to this side. So you might need to take those guys out. I usually like using a uh, dark burst to take those guys out. In fact, I might need to do that so they don't accidentally eat my lock on. Because what you, oh yeah, and you can see all this stuff just flies into the void. Unfortunately, you can't really do much about it. Uh, those, thankfully not all of it does. And you want to switch to dark visor. And you want to get all of these. One, two, three, four, five because that will open this gate right here. And if you were to enter this gate from the other side uh, without opening the gate, if you were to enter the portal from the other side without opening the gate first, you would be stuck in that room. You can still exit through the portal, so it's not like you're softlocked or anything, but it's really annoying when you're trying to like, oh, I can escape from this area. I just need to take the portal, right? Oh God, it's the head. No, uh, but yeah, just to show you, I'm trying to use spider ball right now, can't. Uh, yeah, get out of here. I don't want to deal with these guys, please. Um... Uh, so, for now, we are just going to continue onward. Uh... Get that... Thing. Yeah, they go down in one hit to Dark Beam. Uh, there is actually something I can do with Echo down there, but I need Annihilator for it. And for that, we're just going to need to get to the other side. This is one part I actually like uh, playing more in the trilogy version. I think this is a bit of a controversial opinion, but I actually like the GameCube controls more. I think I've talked about this before, but I was just talking to a friend about this. I like the GameCube controls. Wow, I'm at seven power bombs. I'm at. Uh, I like the GameCube controls more than I like the uh, Wii controls, and I think that's partially because uh, Echoes and Prime One aren't designed around. 
They're designed around not having. They're just. I can't speak. They're designed around not. Uh, they're designed around not. Him. They're designed around the lock on. Uh, I think what I need to do is I need to shoot one, and then I need to shoot this, and then I need to get this up, and then I need to shoot this, and that should do it. Yeah. And that'll stop this ring. Fun fact, speedrunners try to do this as fast as they can because that ring is uh, sort of on a set path and the amount of time it will take to get to its resting position, uh, if you stop it in a certain part of its cycle, it will get to it faster. And so speedrunners, they try to hit that part in the cycle and they pretty much hit it by just doing this as fast as they can. Uh, but yeah, I definitely want to open up this other side right here and I forgot what's beyond this room right because up here up here is what leads to this make this big behemoth of an area oh this is the way to screw attack I can actually get the item that's on the other side of this really quick I mean I could do everything over here just to do things out of order you know uh, is that a light ammo expansion I think it is And I did not know about this. I thought you only, uh, you needed screw attack to get across from here. But no, if you scan this thing right here, and this totally is an excuse for me to start writing down everything, you get this. They are grapple points, and you got lights to show you they're there as well. How many light ammo do we have? They have six, so this should be our seventh. Okay. Yeah, totally not taking notes or anything. No, not at all. I'm just focused on gameplay. So that's a little neat thing. Before we continue on, I want to do this part just to get it out of the way. But we want to scan this. Oh, I actually know what this sort of leads to. But we need to use a power bomb here. It took me forever to figure out that you could just use a power bomb right there. I actually got stuck at this point in my original playthrough of this game. My vanilla playthrough, I should say. And my original, it's both technically correct. Uh, let's get this sort of like here and yeah this is the part I like more in Trilogy because it's easier to aim exactly as you want. Um, I think what I want to do actually is this and then this and look at that. And with that, we can go to that upper door. However, should you do so, I recommend not only saving, but also finding a way to refill your ammo because you want ammo. Trust me, you're going to want light and dark beam ammo for this. Uh, thankfully, there are a few crates right over there that you can farm. And you will need to do it from out here, but I definitely recommend saving if you go that way. Uh, because there is a special little... Um, a special somebody waiting for us over there. And what's probably one of the coolest parts of the game for me, at least. And yeah, those of you who played this game know exactly what I'm talking about. I need a dark beam ammo, particularly. But I definitely want to save. Come on, mashing A. We're, we're speed runners, you know. We gotta go fast. And I find this part that it can be a little finicky sometimes. Uh, I've had a, some problems with this. But uh, yeah, there's a spider ball track here. And what you want to do is you want to get here. And you want to boost. And I, there are times where I boost from, I swear, I boost from that exact position. And it doesn't like boost me at the right angle. And I don't get to, and I go below it and it's annoying. Check it out. It's Dark Samus! We can even scan her! Bio scan complete. Bio scan complete. Dark DNA confirmed. Dark Samus. Target is energizing yourself, building eternal supply of phase on energy to dangerously high levels. And you can just sort of watch this play out. You can't go through this area backwards. At least there's no knowledge. I don't have any. To my knowledge, there's no way to do that. And she will just siphon phase on from these tanks. 
as you start to walk around here. And then this door will open. And she'll still be here. And then by the time this door opens, she's gone. Hmm, where could she have gone? Well, like I said, you might want to farm Dark Beam Ammo here. You know exactly what's coming up. Don't need to try and, well, sure, I'll, I'll be coy about it, just if, in case you really haven't figured it out by this point, what's about to happen. But I want Dark Beam Ammo. Lots of Dark Beam Ammo. I want, like, all the Dark Beam Ammo. Just give me more ammo. Yeah, like that. Just give it to me. I need as much Dark Beam Ammo as possible. Uh, I'll take the power bomb too. Just give me all that delicious dark bean ammo. Okay, yeah, I'm never doing that again. And just for good measure, I'll get some light beam ammo from this. It's worth one dark beam shot, in my opinion. And I also recommend having dark visor for this, if you're playing uh, the randomizer as well. I found you, Faker! Faker, I think you're the fake hedgehog around here. Something, something, I'll make you eat those words! Yes, but welcome to what I consider one of the coolest fights, not just in this game, but in the in the Metroid series as a whole. Heck, in video games as a whole, I love this fight. Dark Samus too. You're fighting on an elevator, a futuristic elevator. It's so cool! Um, and yeah, Dark Samus is a lot more violent and, and aggressive now. But once you do enough damage to her, I shouldn't just skip that shoot because she goes ha <laughs> as you, uh, once the elevator comes all the way up and you're sort of just out in this big wide open area. There's one thing I really don't like about this part of the fight, and we'll get to that when we do. Uh, but yes. Funny thing, the last time I did a randomizer of this, I did it on hard. I showed you guys that file at the beginning of the series, actually. But I got to the fight, I had Annihilator Beam, and I thought, sweet, that's really good for Dark Samus. I got my butt handed to me on a silver platter by her. And I honestly just found that not using Annihilator and just keeping Dark and Light uh, is just better, because you have more ammo. And this, I'm not sure how to avoid this attack, to be honest. Like, I tried jumping in place, and it, she goes so fast, it's hard to even sort of predict when she's going to attack you. Uh, that attack just gives me so much trouble. That's like the one attack I'm just not sure. And then she does this, and you'll see these blue particles floating around. But yeah, she's in her, uh, you basically don't want to... I don't think you can target her with Echo Visor, can okay. you? can. Hey, here's something rare. Though, I recommend just... Uh, I, yeah, I just recommend keeping the Dark Visor because it's easier to just sort of distinguish her. And really what makes this a lot easier is that you can see her. Or see her movements, rather. Because you can see her in Echo, but if she's too far away, it's really tough to distinguish her movements. But yeah, charged dark shots are the way to go for this fight. And if you run out of dark ammo, just switch to light ammo. There are boxes around here with health refills. However, uh, Dark Samus is likely to break them uh, during the fight with, when she uses her boost ball. Which, by the way, yeah, new moves. She's uh, using your abilities against you. Because remember, she has your suit from the end of Prime 1. So it makes sense that all the abilities you had at, by the end of Prime 1, you would also have. Just thank God she doesn't have screw attack. Um, so yeah, that's really all there is to say. It's just a matter of don't die now. I've done this fight on hard before. I can do it again. I should not die this time, hopefully. Uh, just like the first Dark Samus fight, she's invincible when she jumps up in the air, but she is vulnerable when she hits the ground. And when that happens, yeah, that means... Uh, come on... Yeah, that, that is definitely my favorite attack of hers. Wow, already? I mean, okay, yeah, that's what you want to do. Ah, dang it. I think I need to be closer if I want to pull off that timing. 
And of course, obligatory, this music is amazing. I love the Dark Samus fight theme. I love both versions of it, the one you hear here and the Prime 3, but I think they fit for the different situations. Where this is just more confrontation, Prime 3 is more climactic and final, because, well, it's your final encounter with Dark Samus. As far as we can tell, she does not survive the events of Prime 3. I'm sorry if that's a spoiler to anyone. Yeah, okay, that hit her. Uh, so come on, Dark Samus. Thank you for coming towards me. Take your daily dose of darkness. And I trust this goes without saying, but this is why I wanted uh, more dark deep ammo. Uh, yeah, okay, I need to be a little more patient with my shots. Okay, it is fine. It is fine. Uh... And unfortunately, I will have. To, I could get the two more of the dark ammo shots off. Ooh! Did she just push me like all the way across the room? I've heard some people say, oh yeah, this is sort of like a shine spark attack. I don't think it's actually supposed to be the shine spark. But it is kind of cool to think of it like that because, you know, Dark Sam is supposed to take stuff. You saw there, she broke some crates with her attack. And that is another really cool thing about these Dark Samus fights, is that they destroy the environment around you. You really get a sense of, there's just two people who are super powerful just duking it out. Eat your heart out, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, <laughs> I've never been that big of a fan of Dragon Ball Z, personally. I don't mind it. I had a friend in high school who really liked it, and I, I remember we, uh, me and the two of us and one other friend, we actually went to go see, I think it was, it was a movie. I forgot the name of the movie, but it was... It was like new at the time I was graduating high school, which was like 2015. Uh, could you do moves that like don't give you invincibility? I'd appreciate that. Okay, thanks. Where's Uncharged uh, Annihilator when I need it? Theoretically, I think you could break the crates on the side for a little more ammo, but I would just keep it for health refills. It's not that big of a deal. I found the best thing to do to try and avoid these attacks is to try and strafe around a pillar. I remember I've had that strategy before, but sometimes that just that happens. She just takes the weirdest paths. She has so much control over this ball. It's not even funny how much control she has over that. Alright. Uh, yeah, you definitely don't want to get stuck on a pillar. Uh, so de try, definitely, you definitely need to uh, mind your... Uh, surroundings when trying to avoid her attack. I, I, as soon as I say that, I got stuck on a pillar, and then, yep, there we go. And I love this scene, I'm just gonna let it play for itself. Well, no, who am I kidding, I need to double over it. You'll never catch me alive, Samus. No, don't do it, Dark Samus. I'm gonna do it. Sayonara, Samus. No! How could you, Dark Samus? You fool. So I just want to bring up that she fell this way. <laughs> There's just solid ground right here. And it's not like she just fell at a specific angle. She would have had to, like, fall really far just to get out of here. All, when I first saw this, I'm like, hmm. She would have, like... The, the amount of distance she would have need to cover, it didn't look like she was going the speed she would have needed to to cover that amount of distance. It's just so funny, though. And of course, like, the first time you see it, it's like, oh, it's super dramatic, but... Uh, I, think, I want light beams. Yep. So yes, that's Dark Samus 2, and I didn't die! Hooray! Look at me, I'm getting better at the game. You know, the game that you just lost, because I hate myself as well. Oh, that's really weird. The last time I actually went through this game, I think. I think. I just remember the last time I saw this area, it had the red sky backdrop, which is only it once or after you beat Butraxis. But I don't think I came here after beating Butraxis. Um... Where is it? There you are. So, want to get that? And a fun thing I learned, I believe if you just double bomb jump here, you can actually, yeah, 
you can just skip that whole ride around. It actually helps if you're doing a uh, dark beat or a dark suitless run, because you can just get through this quickly. Um. Okay, that's good. Give me more dark ammo, please. All right, I think I got all of it. And the item we are getting is actually on the other side of here. And yeah, I should have mentioned this before, but if you do, if you're playing this and you do this fight, have Echo Visor. I'm sorry if anyone's following along and they just chose to not get Echo. Oh no. Oh no, what is this? I think that's all three Dark Torvus keys, actually. <laughs> Which Dark Torvus has nothing for us, so we're not fighting Chica. And I don't. I don't recall any enemy specifically needing, or any item specifically needing, uh, Torvus to be. Uh, no, okay, we're one dark Torvus key away. That's only our second, uh, drop this round, isn't it? Because we got the light beam ammo. Yeah, we haven't actually gotten a lot. I'm kind of disappointed. Uh, where is it? There we go. There it is. Also, I think there was a really weird glitch on the NTSC. I think it's just NTSC. It might be in all the GameCube versions of this. Uh, but basically, uh, with some of the Echo Lock rooms, particularly the one in the Caretaker Drone Room, which uh, is like a big circular room that you can uh, that holds the that's right by the connection to Dark Torvus. I'll point it out when we get there. If you take out like some of the locks, and then you, uh, uh, if you take out some of the locks, and then leave without taking out all of them, they will disappear, uh, effectively soft locking the game if you save afterwards. So like, say maybe you took out oh, two locks and then you took a lot of damage from something, and you wanted to go save. Yeah, well, there's an issue with that. About that. I'm just wondering if we need to be Quadraxis. Because we don't, we can't even face Quadraxis yet at, because we don't have the... We need two things, we need one of two things to face Quadraxis. We need Annihilator Beam, which I've actually been wanting to test this, but I haven't. Uh, we need Annihilator Beam, or we need to just fall down. Uh, just to let you know, this is an Echo Lock. But what you need to do with this is that uh, you will uh, shoot this door with the Annihilator Beam and you'll hear a sound pattern. And then these three things correspond to different notes and you need to uh, recreate the sound pattern that you hear. Thankfully the developers were nice enough to put a thing down here so we do not get locked out. Oh, I just noticed that. No, we need to go see what it is. Please, give me your knowledge. Display your knowledge unto the world. A movement system can be found at Sanctuary Fortress Sentinel's Path. Where is Sentinel's Path? Because that could be... I haven't been there, have I? Because that could be... Uh... The only movement system I haven't gotten yet is the Gravity Boost. Which could point us to a uh, lower Torvus. Which would be interesting if it did. Alright, I want to go save. So I'm going to go save really quick and I'll meet you guys in a second. Okay, so what I want to do is actually go this way. And we're going to go do a little back stuff a little backwards. Though granted, if you actually watch a speedrun, they go across this pit first to get screw attack early. Because if you get far enough across this pit, it's just going to respawn you on this side. So they use some uh, exploits to gain a little speed. Uh, these guys. Oh, no one noticed me. Please don't. No. Uh, okay. Enough complaining. Let's get you. You can get them before they pop up their shield sometimes, so that's really nice. Um, and this, there's a Dark World portal over here, but we're going to need to get a Switch first. Thankfully, I have a Switch. I bought mine on release day. Uh, 
God, I don't think I've told this story on... I think I did, actually. No, I remember telling this story. I just... It was on an older Let's Play, but... You know, I don't want to assume everyone's watched every Let's Play I did, especially when I consider my newer work better than my older work. Uh... But... I actually got up... I pulled an all-nighter to get the Switch. Uh, they weren't doing midnight releases. There was a Target right by my college campus that I had to walk to. Though, oh... Oh, I should have brought this up. First, let's see what this hint is. It's... A progressive suit can be found... <laughs> oh my god. That means Quadraxis has light suit. That means Quadraxis has light suit. So if I didn't get dark suit, I would literally have to have fought Quadraxis. Oh my god. Okay, so I actually did set aside a save file to show off a little out of bounds thing that you can do. Um, which is, it's set, so, uh, it has, I I did it right before I recorded episode 8, so episode, so all the progress I made in episode 8 wouldn't have been there, including getting Dark Suit. Oh my god, I could go fight, go off screen and fight Quadraxis without, oh no. Wait, why was that there then? Oh well. Okay, so the story. Um, oh my god. Well, once we get that third ink hive, I know where we're going. That third, that last thing hive keep, I know exactly where we are going. So, I actually did get, uh, so... Where was I? So, I had to pull an all-nighter. I actually had a test the following day in my Japanese class, so I took my Japanese notebook with me. I had to walk through part of the city, and keep in mind, this is not where you want to be walking at, like, 2 a.m., but uh, the target I was uh, went to, they didn't do, do a midnight release, but they did like a 7 a.m. release. So what I had to do essentially was, um, what I had to do was I had to walk through a day, uh, not so great part of town at night. Thankfully, I actually went with a friend, so I wasn't alone because he was getting a switch as well. Uh, and I feel like this can sound really sexist. But I feel like it's a lot safer for two guys to walk alone at night than for two girls to. And I think that's just less... That, 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 that's just more... That's just how society is. Uh, not, I, I'm not saying it's the great... Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean... I think that definitely helped a lot. But yeah, I actually ended up going to Target at 3 a.m. I think I left my dorm or, or, or my apart or no, I was at I was at a dorm at the time. It was like a hybrid dorm apartment, but it was more dorm than apartment. I didn't even have my own room. Uh. Okay. You are a missile expansion, so that puts us at what nineteen? You know, I say that sounds sexist. It's really not. I don't. It's just more. I feel. I get scared about this, and I think other people do, that any time you compare a man and a woman in anything, if it seems like... It's not even if you're directly comparing them, because in the case I was talking about, it's that often predators will see women as easier targets, and so they will go after them. Or, you know, they will do some uh, not-so-kind things to them. And this is actually starting to get a really dark topic when my t channel is generally really happy and stuff, so I'm going to move on. Uh, I don't think I need to try and justify myself be... I guess I was worried it would... Yeah, forget it. The more I say, the deeper I'm digging my hole, uh, myself a hole into. So instead, let's just point out that uh, people think this that beam looks like purple grape juice sometimes. And if your ju juice has this sort of texture, I would... Uh, Throw it away. Yeah, throwing it away sounds like a really good idea. Now, excuse me while I can't make this jump. Come on. And it is about time we end the episode. So let's get this item and then we'll call it an episode. So actually for this thing, what you need to do is you need to jump on this platform. It's proximity because you're supposed to come from this way. Oh no. Yes. Nailed it. 
Oh, it actually fired a shot because... Okay. Well, I cannot fall because I have exactly three charge beam... Charge dark beam shots left. No! Oh! oh that's bad, that's bad, that's bad. Uh, okay, I think I actually completely forgot this to do do this on the other side. I'm going to speed up this part because it's just turning the... I'm going to go to all four corners of this room and turn this around. You're supposed to make a trip through the dark world uh, to even get to the over to the other side, but we don't need to do that because I have screw attack. So, yeah. Okay, so we do oh, that's actually the attack I was talking about. The one that hacks into, and interesting, you can actually see, like, everything coming back online, which is pretty cool. Uh, what is, ooh, 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 okay, I can stop doing that. Annihilator beam! We can chew matter to antimatter because that makes sense. It wouldn't completely immediately explode. Oh, did they make it so the bridge didn't break so you don't need a screw attack to escape this room? That's cool. So yeah. We got Annihilator beam and I think that's a great point to end this episode on. So, thank you guys so much for watching and next time on Metroid Prime 2 Randomize. First thing I'm going to do, well, is go back to a save point uh, and get healed and stuff. But then we're going to explore more Sanctuary Fortress. And I know as soon as we can, we're going to have a little confrontation with Budraxxus. Hopefully if we get the key. The, that key is the real big thing standing between us and Budraxxus. But, of course, we still have plenty to do, trust me. In fact, uh... Wow, that was really weird. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time.